You should never use the space bar to align text in your Microsoft Word document. That'll create the illusion that your text is aligned, but when you go to print off your document, your text will look like a jumbled mess. So instead, I'm gonna show you how to use tab stops in this video so that all of your documents can look organized and professional. The first thing you might notice, the job titles in our document are not aligned neatly, and we wanna fix that with tab stops. So tabs or tab stops are places on your horizontal ruler within Microsoft Word that you can use to create a stop point with the tab key on your keyboard, but you'd need to activate that horizontal ruler first. So that's what we're gonna do here. I'm gonna to go to the view tab, click view, and then click the ruler, and then our horizontal ruler at the top turns on, so if yours was like mine and you're not seeing that, you might have to go to the view tab, turn that on. If you already had it, that's great. This You'll also notice that there's a little button here, the tab alignment selector. That's gonna allow us to choose from the five major different types of tabs. I'm gonna show you what those are in a minute, but we'll go with the default tab to fix the problem that we have currently. So what we have to do, I've and I'll turn on the show hide button so you can see what I'm doing and where the tab stops and how they're, they affect uh, the consistency of the text in this document. So I'll click here in the home tab, show hide. You can see I've tabbed over once, but I've used the default tab. So the default tab is usually half an inch. So this is aligned to one of the tab stops, the half half inch mark at the one inch line. And then the next tab stop is around the one and a half inch mark. And this one is sort of aligned there too but it's not consistent. So we can change that by creating our own tab stop. What I'm gonna do is highlight, so I've already tabbed once, and if I add a new tab stop, what it's gonna do is delete that sort of default tab stop and create kind of a new one that we select. So I'm gonna select the text and then just click on the horizontal ruler. This is the easiest way to click to create a tab stop. So I'm gonna click around the two inch mark like that. And now you can see that the text aligns on the left side around the two, just below the two inch mark where we've set our new tab stop. And this looks neat. And if I was to print that off, this would still be aligned properly. So now we're gonna try to do the exact same thing in an application that's a little bit more real worldly. So this is our resume and we want to align the years up properly. So I'll turn on the show hide key here and you can see I've tabbed over once. I'll do the, the exact same thing we did in the last example. So I'll highlight this text here and then I'm gonna put my tab stop on the horizontal ruler, just about the 6.4 line right there. And you can see that everything aligns up nicely on the right side of our page. So now that this is aligned on the right side of the page, I can actually control this a little bit further. So if I highlight all of the text here, just like we did in our last example, and I can just drag the tab stop to exactly where I want it on the page and just change it that way. Maybe I wanna get it a little bit closer to the right side of the page. So I'll just drag it as far as I can, maybe about there and then leave it there and everything looks nice. It's aligned with some consistency and that's how you could create a professional looking resume. All right, so let's try out all of the five major different types of tab stops. So I'm gonna insert the default left tab stop right about here on our horizontal ruler. If I click on the tab alignment selector once, it's gonna turn this into a center. So if we hover our mouse there, it says center tab stop. And maybe I'll put this one right here and then I'll click here again. This is gonna activate our right tab stop. So everything will be outlined on the right side of this tab stop. And I'll show you what that looks like in a second with text. This is gonna, the next one is gonna be our decimal tab stop. So we'll click here again. This is gonna align, if you have numbers, it's gonna align it to the dot on a decimal number. So I'll click on the ruler here to put it there. And our last one is gonna be a bar. You're actually gonna see the bar pop up here. So if you want kind of a nice line separating one column from another, you could put a bar tab stop somewhere on your page. So if I click this, you see that little bar pops up and this is what it would look like. Okay, so you see the left tab stop, the text aligns itself on the left side of that tab stop, just below the tab stop. A center tab stop is the same thing, but below the tab stop, the tab stop would kind of slice the text down the middle. On the right side, it aligns kind of to the right, or on the right side of the tab stop. So you see the line there. And on the decimal tab stop, it aligns everything to the decimal. And on the right side of our page, we have the bar tab stop, which looks like this. And if I turn the show hide button off, it all looks like this and you can see kind of how it aligns to the stop on the horizontal ruler. So now we're gonna put it all together to create the perfect spelling quiz template using tab stops, but also something that's a little bit more advanced using tab line leaders. 
So in this first example, I want to create a space on this page where students, even those with a extremely long first and last name, to write their name. So I'm going to want to put the tab stop around the three and a half inch mark on our horizontal ruler. If you're following along from the last activity, just make sure that this is switched to the left tab stop, the default one, and then place that on the ruler. I think three and a half is good enough, but we'll see what that looks like. And then we want to go to the paragraph setting dialog box. We'll open that up by clicking here in the home tab, and then we'll click the tabs button. That's going to allow us a bunch of tab options. Again, just make sure your alignment says left. Now you've got three options for the line leaders. You have like a dotted line on the bottom, sort of a hyphenated line as number three, and a solid line at the bottom. So that solid line is the one we want. Press four, but we're not done there. We also have to highlight this and click. Make sure you've highlighted it, click set. If you just press OK, uh, this line leader won't be added to the tab stop. So when we press OK, hey, look, it already did it for us. It's great. So I didn't even have to tab over. There it goes. Um, and now I'm looking at this and I'm thinking, you know what, that might not be a long enough space. And just be careful because if you drag this off the ruler, it'll just delete itself and then you have to start over again. So just make sure if you're going to move the tab stop that you move it somewhere on the ruler, just not off the ruler and then drop it there. Okay, so that should be enough space. Now in the same line, we also want to create a space where we can add the data in and also give students a space to uh, so that they know that they have to write the data on that line just to make our lives easier. So we're going to actually put a right tab stop. So I'm going to change the different tab. Uh, I'm going to change this from left tab. The next option is center. And I want the right tab stop there. Okay, so I'm going to insert two right tab stops at sort of the edge of the page. If I click maybe the five in a little bit, when I tab over to that spot, I want to type in the date. So students know they have to enter the date. And then I also want to create another tab stop for a line leader here. So maybe right at the edge of the margin there. And then I'm going to go to the paragraph setting dialog box again, press tabs. I want to select that last one, the 6.44 inches, and then uh, add the line leader again, press set, press OK. And now when I tab over, it gives us a little bit of space. And if you want to create a little bit more space to write the date, just drag this first right tab stop over. And that should be enough space to write the date and your name. But we're not done there. We also have to create a space where students can write the word that you're quizzing them on. So I want to type the number one. Now, if you have tab stops, they could run into the next line. So we've done everything we want with the name and the date kind of area of this spelling quiz template. So now I actually do want to delete um, these tab stops. There's two different ways you can do that. You can just drag quickly drag them off the screen. That's what I'm going to do away from the ruler just to get rid of them quickly. You could also use the paragraph setting dialog box and just say clear and press OK. But I'm just going to quickly drag them right off. We'll create a new line leader and we're using big words in this spelling quiz. So we're going to need a lot of space. So I'm going to put this around the four and a half inch mark, maybe. And then, yeah, it can be right or left. It really doesn't matter. Right or left. It's not going to change a lot with the tab stop so I can leave it there because what we really want is the line leader. We want the line here. So paragraph settings, click tab, and then it's the line leader that's important. I want to create a dotted line, but something that's under kind of the number. So I'll click the dotted line leader and I'm going to set it and press OK. And now when I tab over to that spot, it creates a line leader that's a dotted line and students know that they can write in the word there, even if it's a super big word like. Okay, so let's complete this. We'll go to tab over again and just repeat this process all the way to 10. And now we've got the perfect spelling quiz template just by using a few different tab stops and tab stop line leaders. Now, if you've been following along with all of my Word tutorials every Friday, you might be ready to take on the Microsoft Office Specialist Word exam. To have a look at what that would look like and see what kind of skills you need to master to do well on that test, check out the video on your screen. That'll go over 30 skills that you're going to see on that exam. So thanks for watching. I'll see you over there. Bye.